All right, to get this review started, I'm just going to give a quick familiarization of what you get when you order your Drone Clone Experts Limitless Drone. Um, this is the product out of the box. As you can see, it is a folding drone. To open it up, simply pull out the upper arms first, and then you can open the lower arms here in the back is where the battery goes which I have over here charging right now they do take about eight hours or so to charge and you can check the power by pressing on the button so right now we're at about three quarters or so all right to install the battery all you're gonna do is slide it in. There's a little button, push it down, seat it all the way in. Okay, uh, here on the front side, you do have the camera, and it does actually come out. This is also what I found is where the GPS and all that other uh, electronics is, is located. So it does have a 4K camera that actuates up and down that you can control and here on the bottom is a little uh, camera that points straight down it is a lower quality but it does it does not record it is um, a good tool to have if you're hovering over something and you want to land and you cannot see what's directly below you you can uh, switch to this camera and look directly underneath the drone Alright, a lot of dust in there, we're flying it in the desert, which you'll see later. Alright, to reinstall, you just slide it all the way in, make sure it's seated. And then as you can see, there's three different antennas here on the back side. Alright, um, these are brushless motors, fixed blades, and it does come with additional blades and hardware I believe as well as a screwdriver and a charging cord for the battery all right so next what we're gonna do is take a look at the remote that comes with the drone now as you can see it doesn't have any toggles now they come off for uh, fitting in the, the box better you just push them in, very simple. You turn it on, push of a button. All right, um, we'll just kind of work away. Right now the drone's not turned on, so there's actually no connection to the remote. Since uh, the drone is not on, let's plug this back in. But, all right, so top left corner, Top left corner is a speed control. Uh, it'll shift between 50% and 100% speed. Uh, I've I've figured it goes roughly around 15 miles an hour. Uh, the next button is the return home. So if at any point you lose track of it, you don't know where it is, or you just don't want to fly it back, you simply hit this button right here. And it will find its it'll find the remote and fly back to it. Uh, moving across, you've got the push to record button and then the uh, push button for the uh, taking a, a picture. Now these two outer buttons, they also have dual purpose. The speed control button also works as the binding button for whatever reason the controller and the drone have not bound with each other, which they do automatically. You would simply hold down on it, and because the drone's not on, it's not going to do it. But it will begin chirping, the lights will flash rapidly, and it will bind. The far right button, or the photo capture button, is also the calibration button that you sometimes have to do with the drone. I always recommend it, especially the first flight of the day. Once you get your GPS connections, you're going to hold down on it 
till it chirps. Then what you'll do is you will begin rotating the drone horizontally like this. It will chirp again. You'll orient it vertically, continue to rotate. It'll chirp again, and then it's done. Now, what I have found is that in some cases, if the drone is not calibrated, it will not lift off. And so if you unlock the drone and you go to try to take off and it just sits there and stares back at you, most likely it is due to the fact that it needs the GPS calibrated. Not a big deal. Uh, speaking of lifting off, if, uh, first thing you gotta do is unlock the drone. Now from the controller, the way you do that is you pull the two sticks down and out or you can go to the inside as well. And that will simply get the blade spinning. Lifting off is as simple as pushing up on the left stick. There's dust in there, I need to clean that out. And then, or you can use back here on the back side, behind the antennas, is some buttons. This one here is the auto, auto takeoff, auto land button. If you push this, it will hover to about uh, three feet or one meter, and then you can take it from there. Or you can, from any altitude, push this button, it'll begin coming into land. The next button here is the headless mode, which means the drone will fly based off the position of the remote. So even if, in normal circumstances, you push forward, the drone will fly forward, being the front is where the camera is. However, if for whatever, if you're in the headless mode and you have the drone oriented, let's say, this way, whereas clearly the front of the drone is facing me, typically you press forward and it would fly towards me. However, in headless mode, if you push forward, forward is whatever is away from the remote and it will actually fly backwards. And you can use this in any orientation. You would press forward and it would fly sideways in this case, which may be useful if you are trying to take video paralleling something and you want to uh, fly the drone in a non-headless fashion, as they call it. The other two buttons on the back side are to adjust elevation, uh, just to kind of dial it in up and down just a little bit if it's not hovering exactly flat. Uh, here are the antennas. And this here is where you set your phone if you want to fly it with the display. Speaking of displays, as we look down here we do have a, a, a little LED display which gives you some information. Right here on the far left is your signal strength which because we're not connected to anything, there's no signal. GPS, it will tell you how many satellites you've acquired. Again, we don't have the drone turned on, so no satellites are acquired. You have mode, there's two modes, one and two. Mode one is what they call optical flight, and that is, it doesn't have enough GPS signals to be flying accurately with the GPS. Once it's in mode two, that means I believe it's six or more or eight or more GPS signals, whatever it is, it will automatically go to mode two, which is GPS flight mode, and that will allow you to fly very accurately using um, the GPS functions. It hovers a lot better in the wind, it counters, it, it, it flies so much better. Uh, up here we have a transmitter, receiver, battery life, transmitter being the remote or TX. And then the bottom battery power is the battery on the drone itself, the receiver, which again, we're not connected, so it's not on. H and D is height and distance, height or your altitude, so zero being whatever, so zero, zero is where you took off from. And then as you begin flying it, those numbers change as you fly. So it goes up to, I believe, 250 meters. All these distances are in meters. Distance, I've pushed it out over 360 meters, which is a pretty good distance. It begins losing signal, 
and once it does, it, it begins to return home. All right, so next we're going to take a look at the app. This is the app that the drone company has, I guess, partnered with. If you open the app, first thing you have are instructions. And these are basically a digital copy of what comes with the drone in the packaging. Gives you some basic information. And talks about the display that we will get into here in a minute. And yeah, just some basic stuff. Next you have the records. This kind of talks to you about uh, each one of your flights and not a whole lot of pertinent information in here calibrate now as you saw earlier calibrate by holding down the camera button this is basically a way to do that without using the physical controller you can fly this drone completely from your phone settings nothing crazy in here um, stabilization that is related to the camera and you can actually fly it in stabilization on off or compare i currently have it turned off it does affect some of the other functions some functions require it to be on some functions require it to be off and with compare you'll actually fly with a split screen and you can you can look between both stabilized and uh, non-stabilized then you've got the 4K correction, not 100% sure what that one's all about, but I just had to keep it on. Alright, getting into the start play menu. Alright, you always get this uh, little warning here to remind you to don't take off with things around it. Um, okay, so as you can see, we do have connection with the drone. I'm just going to leave it staring here at the wall, or better yet, here, I'll stare at this. Right, going across to the top of the screen, we have the Wi-Fi connection signal to the drone. Let's display there. you got here. Recording to recording, I like it. So that's this connection, that's this uh, symbol here. Next to that, we have the optical flow mode, or if once it has GPS signal, will be the GPS connection. Right here next to that little red icon is the GPS signals. You can see it's zero right now. You have the battery life of the drone. I'm not sure what the start thing is. Yeah, sure. Uh, we'll skip over all that for a second. The data in the middle. Right here is the camera flip. As you can see, now it is looking down. And now it's looking forward. And that basically is, if you're hovering over something that you want to land on, it allows you to look down below you. Uh, VR, virtual reality, I guess if you got those goggles. Cool. Uh, phone orientation, so just flips the camera view. SD versus HD, self explanatory, high definition, standard definition. One, obviously, SD records better. I'm going to turn this thing off. Uh, next to the SD, we have the photo gallery. And as you can see, there's some footage in there. Some back arrow. Some back arrow. Nothing special there. Moving down the left side, you've got a camera, which is literally just taking a picture. Below that, video record. Allows you to record. MV is like a movie maker. It's like an internal movie maker. You have your opt uh, digital zoom. If you wanted to zoom in on something. Uh, this third one down. This uh, allows you to have on-screen on toggle control, and basically, so you can fly with just the uh, phone. There's your speed control, 
auto takeoff. Obviously, you have to unlock it first. You would unlock and then hit the auto takeoff and then auto land as well. Again, this slide controls the pitch of the camera. On the right hand side, we have trajectory flight. All right. The top one here, basically, you should be able to draw out where you want it to go, and it'll go. This one does waypoints, which you use the GPS for, and uh, we'll show you that later on. This next one down is like your hand controls, so this is the tracking button. It only works in optical mode, and it finds a person. You select them, and it's supposed to follow them. I haven't really got it to work, nor have I really messed with it too much, but maybe we will later. Hand control, up, down, take pictures, things like that, I guess. Again, haven't really messed with it. This one, though, I have used quite a bit, the GPS tracking, and again, we'll start with that one later. It allows the drone to just follow the signal of the phone, which is kind of cool. This one here, the, uh, the little circle, it's another one that I haven't really used much that I'll mess with today maybe. And what it's supposed to do is the drone flies on a 360 and records you. Return home. And then you've got your maps. And as you can see, it does give you a ring of distance that it can fly in. And it should maintain signal within that ring. If the drone was on, you would also see the little picture, the little icon of a drone next to the location of myself. And it does show distance from each other. We'll, we'll show that later. Real quick, one thing I wanted to cover in the top center of the screen, you do have a display for your altitude your distance, height, all those other velocities. Um, and it also gives you your lat long as well. So that's just GPS information. And strangely enough, if you tap on the little GPS signal, it disappears. So there you go. We're going to take a look at the stabilization on, off, and compare. So first, let's do the on. All right, and to give us some reference, I've got the back side of a box here. So I'm not moving it real fast. And that's stabilization on. Kind of the same thing. Okay, now we're going to do compare. And it's going to give us a split screen. We should be able to see the difference on the display here. So the right side is stabilizer on. Left side stabilizer off. What I'm going to do is try to hold it very still with my hands and we'll see which side. As you can see, it does look like the right side it still wiggles because I'm my hand's not perfectly steady, but it's a smoother wiggle, right? Get a little moving. There you go. Stabilization mode on and off. There is definitely a difference. But, yep, that's it. Oh, this function does not work though. The down facing camera does not work when the stabilization is on. So we turn it off. And we can switch to the down facing camera. And there you go. Uh, 
looking down, looking forward. So that's why you need to turn off stabilization.